Hi there, I'm Barney Morn, a Franco Manitoba Metis from La Riviera Rora. I'm passionate about our local history. I teamed up with Sean Branson, some local chefs, and some local historians to teach us about the Franco Manitoba culture, cuisine, and history. On va aller trouver de la bonne grave à manger, on va aller trouver des bonnes histoires, and we're going to learn a little bit about ourselves. So, follow me and let's go find la bonne grave. Bonjour, salut, welcome to La Cuisine, the where we're going to host La Bonne Grub, a franglais cooking show where we're going to explore history and cuisine, letting our bellies guide us. We're going to go and explore Franco-Manitoban cultures through chefs and food, and I'm going to get to, well, cook a lot of it with you. We're going to have experts in here, though. I'm just going to learn the whole time. And c'est pour nous autres, okay? So we're going to use a lot of the traditional uh, French stuff, uh, the recipes that we would have. Tu sais, comme ma mère faisait. On va faire de la bonne tortière. On va faire des affaires sucrées avec l'érable. And we're going to give you all the recipes. Don't worry, you're going to be here with us on both sides of the coin, okay? This is all going to be happening in Franglais, just for you guys, okay? Because that's who we are in Franco-Manitoban culture, okay? So, what we're going to do this week is we're going to visit with Real Curé from Saint Pierre Jolie. Uh, his business, Chez Mehmed, makes the most amazing tortillas, and we're going to actually make a whole bunch. So, you meet him. I'm going to put up my hair. Je vais laver mes mains un petit peu. Je vais pogner mon cuillère à bois, and we're going to be ready to go. Go meet Real, and we'll be back in a second. My name is Real Curie, and I work for a company called Aerial Photography. I'm basically a door-to-door -door salesman, and uh, I sell aerial photos. As a part-time, I do some cooking. I've been doing that for at least uh, 35 years now. Uh, it came out of necessity. I was a single father for five years, and I didn't want my kids to eat hot dogs and hamburgers all the time. So that's when I really got interested in, uh, in cooking. and. Uh, then I owned the golf course in St. Pierre for 20 years. And uh, one year my cook quit a week before we started uh, the season. So I decided, well, I gotta do that menu. And then I basically went into that kitchen and that's how it evolved. I found a passion in it. And uh, I've, I don't have any formal training, but uh, I've tried lots of recipes. And uh, 20 years ago, we did poutines at the golf course. We wanted to showcase our French Canadian cuisine and it became very popular like uh, for my tournaments I used to have uh, a menu a French Canadian menu we'd call it and it became our number one seller and that's why I realized you know dare to be different and people love you know when you're different. I kind of developed uh, recipes that my mother and my grandmother had at home and it's a lot of comfort food and very simple recipes but very good recipes. I also got involved with the museum here. Uh, 26 years ago, they wanted a menu for the Sugar Shack at the Festival du Voyageur. And uh, I basically did the whole menu. And today that, uh, at the festival, it's probably the biggest event of the festival. And we're always known for our food. I try to specialize with products with maple syrup. Uh, I put everything in my, uh, that I can use. All my recipes have a little bit of maple syrup in it. I'd rather use that than anything else. I don't think I'm a creative person, but when it comes to cooking, I will look at different recipes and I'll create my own creation. If I would like to eat the ingredients that are in there and the, 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 the products, that's how I develop my, my recipe. In La Cuisine, now Real is joining us here. It's Bonsoir. time to get going. Hey, so you've been a busy guy in these last few years with Shame and Man, eh? How many tortillas do you make a year? Oh, two, three mil. Two, three mil. That's 3,000 tortillas a year. Yeah, yeah. And you're making all the food for Festival du Voyageur, too. Oui. For La Cabane à Sucre, I make all the food for the Sugar Shack for the last 26 years. And I'm just picturing that in, in your cuisine there, you have a bunch of mamayas working, but really you just took mamayas recipes and you're making it all, right? Yeah, I try to copy mamayas because mamayas a toujours les meilleures recettes. <laughs> Ça fait qu'on nous autres, notre compagnie, on veut copier ma mère. So let's give people the basic one. I think that's what we're yep. doing, right? Let's give them the basic yep. one. Okay, so first step in making the ma mère's tortilla. I'm your servant, Réal, yeah. c'est à toi. Tell me what to do. Or, hold on, let me get, let me get Je suis content que t'es mon servant. I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you're my servant now. <laughs> and you invited the right guy in this kitchen. A curie in your kitchen? We're lucky. You can ask for a oh, better yeah. than that. Oh yeah, hey, you, if you're ever in St. Pierre and you have a chance to meet a curie and you can have a barrière, you have one of those. It's, a, it's like a fried little thing you have to yeah. share with them. That's a family thing <laughs> that we do. 
Yeah. I'm lucky enough to know Real. I graduated with his daughter. We started in kindergarten together, and his nephews are some of my, my best friends. The Franco Manitoban, it's uh, it's kind of our way of life to be speaking to each other. Uh, we okay. all know each other, right? Mais là, on peut parler toute la soirée. Yeah, I guess we're gonna start eating. Okay, let's do this. Fait qu'on commence par les patates. On épluche des patates qui vont être dans la tortière. So this recipe needs... Avec ta main droite, là, toi, là. Tu vas te couper les doigts. What's wrong with this? Yeah, well, what yeah. are you? How are you doing a whole thing like that? How long have you been peeling potatoes? Were you cooking in your house too when you were a kid? Yeah. Je suis capable de faire cuire un bon œuf aussi. Oh, Dieu. You can cook a good egg, a nice scramble? Oh, pas scramble. Easy over. <laughs> over easy. Okay. Bon, là, on se qu'on a mis les patates, là, on met de l'eau pour les faire bouillir. Okay. So you're just, you're just putting just enough water just on top of yeah. the, the potatoes, okay? Yeah, on va faire cuire. On va mettre le rond, là. And we're waiting for a boil. We want a boil out of yeah, this, right? Yeah, on va les faire euh, cuire. Your mom didn't add potatoes. Why do you add potatoes no. to the whole thing? La raison que je mets des, des patates, c'est parce que ça donne un, une meilleure texture. On va faire cuire la viande. Ça, ça va okay. être la prochaine étape. Okay, we'll get ready Et with puis, that. Et puis, on va mettre des oignons. On va mettre des oignons. Et mes amis, qui a fait ce couteau-là? Okay, how many onions do we need for this whole thing? Une. Un oignon. Just one onion, okay? Just one onion. And we're going to be making how many tortillas with this recipe so far? Uh, deux. Okay, so, yeah. so t two pota a potato each and then one onion split between the two. Yeah. Okay. Tu sais, ça peut varier le, le, le montant de patate que tu mets. Okay. Tu veux pas que ça soit à goutte trop la patate. Right. Mais l'oignon, c'est la même chose. Ça va au goût. Tu peux en mettre un peu moins, un peu plus. Do you have a good Mais ratio that you would do for that? I usually do 10 pounds at a time. Okay, okay. And so I have two big onions. And then I add the, the spices after. Okay, so and how are you how you can cut these onions? We're gonna keep going with these onions while our, our potatoes are boiling. Uh, we're gonna come back in just a little bit and we're gonna get started cooking with our meat. We'll be right back. Bienvenue à la cuisine. Réal is here with me. He hasn't killed me yet. We're still good partners. Yeah. We're going to keep making this tortilla. So we've used two potatoes. We've used two onions. And we've cut those up. The potatoes are boiling. Yeah. Those are all cut up. C'est temps pour la viande. Yeah, now okay. we're going to prepare the meat. Là, je, oh, today I have two and a half pounds okay. for this recipe, which is pounds. actually a small recipe. D'habitude, j'en mets 10 livres. Okay. We'll put in the recipe, but for today we'll do it that way. So two and, and a half pounds for two two tortillas. On va mettre un peu d'eau. Okay. Ensuite, we'll and the then and then we'll uh, put the the uh, onions in there. Oh, okay, spirit. and then we all put the okay. recipe. Okay, so what we do we have, have in here? What's well, here's all called? spice. Okay, and how much and about that do we a, put? We'll put about a teaspoon. Okay. And the same thing with uh, sage. Sage really goes well with pork. And the mixture here is about half and half. A moitié, moitié. The pork the and the beef. So we have half, por half pork, half beef in here. Yeah, that's could, you, could you use other stuff? You could use probably any other meat in here, right? Oui, mais y'en a. Bison or something? Y'en a, oui, on peut mettre du bison. Y'en a qui font, ils mettent des chevreuils, they put wild, wild meat. Oh, okay, yeah. And, so wild uh, game would be yeah, good. Yeah, wild game is good. Some people would put bison. Uh, some people put stri strictly pork, but Nous autres, on va 50-50. 50-50. So we got sage, we got allspice, and what's now the last Now we got pepper. Here? You always need pepper. Okay. How and much of this are we putting in? About a teaspoon. Okay. Two, three, two, three. And then we need a little bit more salt. We'll put <laughs> yeah. a, a teaspoon and a half. Okay. So it's pretty sad. Tes mains are too sad, là, toi, là. Should I have waited? Your, Should your, I have waited? Your hands are too dirty there. <laughs> okay, now it's all mixed. Okay. Now we're going to put it on the stove and we're going to boil it. Okay. Uh, cook it. Okay. So let's get that cooking for a little bit. Yeah. And that usually takes about about 10, 10 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay. And about half time. While the meat's cooking, we're gonna put the potatoes yes, in there. Yes, because okay. then we can mix everything together to get a nice consistency. You have something here. It's the it's the French way to have ketchup, right? But you, you don't like calling it ketchup, though, eh? Ben, c'est un ketchup qui est différent d'un ketchup rouge, là. It's oh, yeah. way different than the the red ketchup. This is a recipe that I copied from Quebec. It's uh, it's called. Uh, we call it ketchup au fruit, which means with fruits and 
This goes with the tortilla. Yeah. I always eat this stuff with tortilla. Some people use uh, cranberries. Mm -hmm. Gravy is good with that. Gravy is good. Yeah, bun, 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 bun gravy. Là. <laughs> Avec un beau rôti de porc, là, with a roast pork, the gravy there. Yeah. That's really good. But I prefer this one. So le, le, les affaires de chez MMA, c'est tout fait à Saint Pierre, right? Yeah, all our products are made in Saint Pierre. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. in Saint Pierre, there's uh, there's the big museum where in the basement, that's where he had, or in in the kitchen there is where they makes all of his food. And in that very same parking lot, you have the Cabana Sick, where they actually make uh, maple syrup tapped out of the Manitoba maples. And we actually took a little visit. We went on a fait une bonne trip to 59, and we went and check out the sugar shack and how they're actually planting trees for the future. So we'll check it out. First of all, welcome to St. Pierre and uh, you're located in the sugar shack where this is where we do all our boiling process when the mother nature allows us to tap our trees and to harvest the sugar water. We've been doing this since uh, the late 1980s. We tap uh, close to 400 trees throughout the community. It's an annual event and it's a huge fundraiser for our museum, the St. Pierre Museum. Uh, we're also involved with the Sugar Shack at the Festival du Voyageur during February. What happens here in Manitoba, contrary to what happens in Quebec, is that we only have a small window. And usually the window here, depending on the weather, it could be from three days to 21 days. But usually it's around a 10 to 14 day window. And with the heat of the sun during the day and the cold freezing process at night, what happens is that it forces the water around the base of the tree to flow through those vines to be able to clear it up for the sap that will be coming in at the end of the process. We have to hurry up, tap our trees, gather as much as we can during that period of time. We do that on a daily basis and usually we gather at around 4.30, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. We haul the sugar water here in the large container that you can see in the back. And from there, we start our boiling process the following morning at around 4 o'clock. 4 to 5 o'clock in the morning. It takes about 12 hours to boil. So what we do, we go through the process of boiling. And then after that, we go gathering the sugar water again. We were lucky enough that we did get a small sponsorship from Manitoba Hydro to be able to help us to create a, ma a maple forest and we've decided as a board, plus also for our future generations, is that we're going to be planting up to just under 100 maple trees in the back of our museum and on our grounds. We're lucky enough that we've, um, you know, that we've been experienced in uh, sugar making and that we have uh, the ability to, to sweeten numerous, numerous people's uh, taste buds here in St. Pierre. Et re bienvenue à la cuisine. Saint Pierre is pretty cool and pretty good yeah. place to grow up. Summer. So you you can go get some maple syrup in Saint Pierre. The premier semaine of uh, April, they have the sugar and off festival. Then come back to Saint Pierre for you know what? Frog follies. Les folies grenouilles, exactly. So, okay. Forty eight years of follies. They start the same time as the Festival du Voyage. <laughs> so now we're gonna drain these potatoes. Okay. And we're drain gonna the potatoes. And we're gonna mash them or smash them. Smash them. Can you do that? <laughs> I'll let's it's capable, like yeah. Sponge capable. Here we go. Just take out some of my anger. Here we go. Here you go. How, how much do we mash? Is there a scale? Well, mashing? I mean, uh, you're mashing it with the wrong hand. You should use your left hand. My left hand? No, maybe I have to use it then. Why with your left hand? Well, it goes better with the left. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> People have their preferences. That's well. right, that's right. But okay. mine is left. So we have these two potatoes boiled and mashed, and now yeah. we're gonna mix them straight into yeah, there. Yeah, okay, uh, the meat is almost ready to... Okay, okay, so let's we're put gonna, it here. We're gonna put the, the mashed potatoes in there. Okay. No, it won't happen okay, like okay, that. Okay, okay, finally, uh, I'm just gonna look really okay. good. You can't, you, hire, you can't hire help like yeah, this. I'm just gonna look real good, and you yeah, good. Yeah. Look at that, okay. Because that, that helps keep the moisture in there, right? That's yeah. what you were saying before. You well, it gives it. a different taste also. Okay. And uh, a lot of people do it with that recipe. So now we mix it all up. So we're gonna cook it a little bit more. And then if there's too much liquid, then, then we'll, uh, okay, we'll get, fix it. Get rid of it and we'll take yeah. care of it like mm -hmm. that. Okay. Perfect, yeah. okay. So this, this meat mix, once it's done, we, uh, it, it's done It's going It's gonna have to, uh, you know, cool off before we can put it into the, uh, 
into the okay. pie itself. Yeah. But how long does it take to cook, though? Uh, about 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay, it so depends how much you have in your pot. Right. That's like right. this tonight, it's going to be about 10-15 minutes. Yeah. Let's let this meat cook a little bit. On va revenir dans un petit peu, puis on va faire la crête. De la bonne grave. Welcome back to La Cuisine for de La Bonne Grab. We've let the meat cool off now, yeah. and now it's time to put, because we, we, we can't let any hot meat go into the pastry, right? No, no. Okay, so no, that No, we it, can't because then it's, it's not good because we have to, if you're gonna cook it right away, it's okay, but if you're not, and you're gonna put it in the freezer or in the fridge, you gotta let it cool off first. So I put a mixture of both, so I put two and a quarter cups. So you got whole wheat and, and white flour. Yeah, and together. Then, yeah. And then that's it that's in there? Yeah. Okay. Then uh, you wing it a bit, and it depends how much. Uh, two and a half okay. cups ish? Yeah. It looks like? Okay. Yeah, it's two and a half cups ish. <laughs> you know? Okay. Après ça, on met le lard. Le lard, okay. Là, le lard, ça vient pas de, de Safeway, ça, ça vient de la ferme de ma nièce. So, it's from my niece's farm. No way, and, yeah, from there. Yeah, yeah. So and, we're going to mix that in there. She's at the farmer's market in uh, St. Norbert. Okay. So she does a great job with the, and she sells, she sells all the beef from her farm directly to the market, and they sell at the, at the uh, St. Norbert market. Look at that, la famille yeah. a la bonne cuisine there. Yeah. It's good to eat at your house. I know when I'm going to be back in St. Pierre and I'm hungry, 30 days closed, I'm going to your house, okay? Yeah, yeah? Well, no problem. <laughs> You're uh, always welcome. <laughs> I'm keeping you that. We have it on record now. I'm still going to your house. Je vais avoir une bonne toast en fin de la soirée. Can we add something else to it now? Well, now that uh, it's going to be all mixed up there like this, on va mettre du liquide, on va mettre un oeuf. Un oeuf. Okay, just one egg. Now, was this grown from a niece or a nephew or no, anything like no, that? No, not okay, that. Okay. No. <laughs> but she does have free range uh, okay. chicken. Okay, <laughs> so we can get that, okay. Yeah, she can. Yeah. So, um, so now I mix this with a little bit of vinegar, about okay. a teaspoon, a tablespoon of vinegar. Tablespoon of vinegar with the and egg. Then, yeah. And then we're going to fill this up, because usually that's for a double recipe, but today we're going to be using half of this okay. mixture. This whole baking thing is an incredible science. And uh, I'm, I'm just wondering where you learned all these baking skills while you were running a golf course or being the mayor of St. Pierre. That's really what I'm wondering about. <laughs> I'm a man of many talents, they say. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll taste the tortilla. No, I'm kidding. No, they're, they're good. Yeah, they're for sure good. I usually make about, when I do a batch, 60 to 70 in one batch. In a day? In, in, in the morning, yeah. I'm usually finished around 10 o'clock. And, and you finish it just with the dough and then people buy it and they're yeah. able to just slap it in the oven and so yeah. it comes to... Exactly. Acheter la tortilla a grande quantité, ça arrive beaucoup. You want to always stock your freezer, yeah. right? There's yeah, there's always... A, I always keep about 30, 40 in my freezer. Now we got a good mix here. I think we got a good mix going on of, of dough. Yeah. It looks nice. It's not, it's not just a white flour there. No. It looks really good. That bun and bun melange. Bon melange. <laughs> I got the cooled meat here. Okay. Bon, on commence par faire le. Okay. Are we just blessing it with flour here? What's yeah. happening here, Dad? Well, we're gonna roll the dough. <laughs> but you're a cute, right? So I'm just wondering if you. Yeah. Just well, I, I bless it. everything I do. <laughs> okay, that works. That's fine, c'est beau. So you just grab the little chunk there and we're gonna make the bottom part of the crust, yeah, right? Yeah, we're gonna do the bottom, then okay. we'll do a, a top. If I, roll, if I roll my own dough, I can roll 40 pies in an hour. So, if I go come why, you can roll 20 pies in an hour? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you can do. <laughs> so this is the bottom part. Okay. Should I start adding yeah, meat Yeah, you can there? put the meat in there. Okay. Divide it in two because we're going to be two pies. Okay. Usually we measure how much we put in it, but for this, we don't need we to. We can split it in half. We make sure there's enough for everybody. Okay. And yeah, this will be a good, good servings in here then. Yeah, make sure you spread it okay. carefully there. Make sure every bite is equal. Well, you don't want to make, make it all lumpy. And <laughs> it won't look good. It's all, it's all in the, uh, in the look, you know. All in the appearance. Yeah, all the appearance. So what's your secret then? Eh? Nothing. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. okay. <laughs> don't forget, I'm the real cure. <laughs> yeah. The real cure for the tortilla aching. Okay. The bottom looks fine. I mean, uh, I'll give it a, I'll give it a nine out of ten, I guess. With an enough would this. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna make a little uh, hole. A whole half moon. 
and then we're gonna put it on the... All right, so we, we're gonna get this one going. Uh, we got the top for it now. Okay, now so, we're gonna So our it. recipe will make two. We're just gonna make one for today. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and we'll see how this one's gonna taste in a little bit. So you cut the little slit there, fold it over the top. You're cutting the corners to keep yeah. that nice edge. You have Monsieur Goulet, who has a very important house, not far from when you're doing this cooking, right? Pretty yeah. important stuff. Uh, we're actually gonna go back there. We'll go check out Monsieur Goulet's house and give you guys a little chunk of that history. Okay? Okay, pas problème. Right on. We're here in front of La Maison Goulet, a place I've probably been a hundred times as a kid, but I never really got to know the story. So I asked my friend Roly Gagné, president of the St. Pierre Museum Board, to share some, not all, some of the stories here in La Maison Goulet. I've lived beside this for a lot of my life and I don't know what's going on in here. And as a proper wanting to be historian, I have to learn what is this house about and what is it supposed to show for a community? Well, La Maison Goulet is, uh, is to show and to, to um, realize and respect and also r recognize the Métis influence that, that were here in the Riviera Ova or the Rat River, which you're, we're all part from. But how did the, um, the area, how was it settled? And that's the whole idea with, the, with La Maison Goulet is to show that uh, you know, it is a Métis community. So, t bringing along Monsieur Goulet's story, cause you, you've mentioned before that there's there's other uh, families that have come here, but let's follow the Goulet family from sure. from wherever they they start in Manitoba. Okay. Well, the Goulet family, of course, it's it's from Saint Norbert, which was recognized as uh, as, uh, as as the key Saint Norbert for the southeastern region. Um, so les Moyes, uh, les Goulet, so they came from that era from the original Voyager that, that did arrive at La Rivière Rouge and they're the offspring accordingly and they became part of the fur trade, the scouting, okay. the buffalo hunt and the way that the Métis were living. Because a lot of the Métis, and we talk about this in our Fort Gibraltar episode, but a lot of the Métis in the area were, were helping the fur trade out by providing meat and pemmican and other stuff like that, right? And that's and you're right on there, because what happens is that the Goulet, uh, they had found that there was an economic force, especially after uh, the Northwest Company had merged with the Hudson Bay Company, is that they still needed people to serve them as in regards to bring their stock from one yeah. fort to another. And the Goulet family was instrumental in regards to the organization of those caravans. Oh, okay. Okay. So what they would do, they would uh, they would arrange to that there was some transportation to be done. Here in Saint Pierre, we're on the Crowing Trail, qui le chemin Saint Paul. So what happens here is that we're, yeah, and this is the the spot where we are now because of where our church and our Presbyter or the priest's residence and the convent were right on the Crow Trail, historically correct, which goes by your house. Yeah. <laughs> in Audubon. Yeah. Uh, from there to Neverville, from Neverville to Saint uh, Catherine. Right? Well, we did wouldn't cross the river, but we would oh, come okay. across, and then after we get to uh, Saint Catherine, Saint Abbey, Saint Vincent, Fort Garry. So, when you're thinking about the the waterway, which was the main transportation, second to that was the caravans. Puis les Goulet, what they would do, they would arrange, they would get the contracts to haul. If they're going to uh, uh, to the Athabascas or if they're going to St. Paul, they would arrange those caravans. Oh, okay. Ben, merci beaucoup, Roli. Thank you very much for sharing some of our own hometown's heritage. I got more digging to do about our hometown, it looks like. Oh, you got a lot of digging to do, man. Come on, come <laughs> get back to St. Pierre. Stop working <laughs> at the fort over there and come work the <laughs> here. So, but no, uh, Barney, it's that uh, we know that you're from a historical Métis family yourself. Uh, C'est important. I think it's important to let's find our roots. Let's find out who and where we came from. And to find out to see, you know, on what side was your uh, Métis family? Was he on the Riel side or was he a little bit opposed? Because this oh, yeah. this area was a place that some some of our Métis families, they came to hide out because of the revelations of what was happening during the time. 
and it was uh, it was almost like a great escape, you know, like how they have these uh, these uh, you know spas and everything. Well, this was the you know. Well, we know we know Santiago to be a haven for sure. Yeah, but actually, that's right. <laughs> so it's cool. So we we got to go tap into those roots while they're yep. not dried up. Well, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. But, a big merci, a gros merci à Rolly Gagné from saint pierre jolie Come on over to the Maison Goulet for some more history and I'm going to be sticking around here. I'll probably live here next summer. Okay, re-bienvenue à la cuisine. Look at that. Oh my God, look at that. Voila. Penses-tu que ça va être bon? Do you think it's going to be good? Ça a l'air assez bon. I mean, I guess I have to say it because you're here in either way. Mais uh, moi, je veux vraiment, je veux vraiment l'essayer. Do you want to taste it? Yeah, I just... Okay, let's, let's cut a piece here. So not often does it happen that you get to enjoy a tourted with the man who, rate, who made it. So Real Curie, un gros merci pour avoir venu dans la cuisine. On a fait la bonne grub, je pense. I think so. La bonne grub, c'est toujours bon. <laughs> Chez ma mère, it's always good. All right. Let's see if it passed the ma mère test here. Yeah, get everything. Don't miss, don't miss a single bit of there. I want to taste the onion, the potatoes, the spices. Okay, and spread ketchup glace. Get my peaches in there. Tu as une fourchette? Moi je vais, moi je vais aller. Okay, I'm gonna try it out. Okay. Okay. So this is coming from a guy who doesn't like ketchup. We'll see if this will make the difference here. Get enough of that ketchup on there. You gotta put some. J'en ai mis. C'est pas de longueur. You gotta put some more. Faut que j'en garde, garde pour demain. We have, you've converted me. I think I can like that ketchup. Does yeah. it taste like, there's a very good sweetness to it. And then when you have the onions and the sort of, I guess more dry taste of the, of the, of the, the meat there, that citrus li livens it up. Well, and yeah, I think you know what you're doing. That's, that's the only <laughs> thing I use in my tortilla, in my house. <laughs> okay, so. so Thank you very much for having me. Mais Réal, merci à toi. Ça m'a fait plaisir, ça m'a fait un grand plaisir. Absolument un plaisir pour moi. Tu reviendras chez moi, OK? Puis on fait d'autres recettes. OK, pas de problème. Nice, I got him, we got him. OK. <laughs> After the break, we're going to go find an interesting pairing to tour with, uh, to make with this tourcière. A grand merci encore, Réal. Okay, Thank you very much for coming. Ça un grand plaisir. Un grand plaisir à moi. Yeah. You're going to come cook some food at my house? Sure, anytime. You got it, I, all right. I, I could be the home cook, you know, for you. My home cook meals yeah. from Maria. I think that's the real cure that we need in the house. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back with a very interesting pairing for Tortier. So the tortilla is there and ready to go. We need to find the perfect drink for it. So I found the expert, the guy from uh, Permanade Cafe and Wine, from Fort Gibraltar, and from Provisions at Lower Fort Gary. I got food and expert, food and beverage expert, Sean Branson. Hi. So what are we gonna do here? Uh, we're gonna pair a uh, nice Manitoba uh, drink. It's uh, the maple um, syrup uh, pop from Pick -a Pop. So what makes it Manitoba? Well, I, there's a story between Pick a Pop. Pick a Pop okay. was around in the early 70s, and basically okay. people used to go to these stores, randomly pick different pop. I liked cream soda, my sister liked orange. Yeah. So you would make a dozen, and they were liter bottles. Okay. Take them home. They became very popular uh, all across Canada. There was it was in Calgary, Edmonton. Lethbridge and Moose Jaw. Huge! Just absolutely It was huge. quite big in Moose Jaw, actually. <laughs> and, and, and they even went into the States, into Min Minnesota, uh, and even Hawaii. Wow. So they actually kind of spread this whole uh, format, but unfortunately the whole thing shut down in, in 1996. Okay. Yeah, so. And then? And then, actually, uh, a, a wonderful award-winning wine, uh, just, uh, so, sorry, wa water, yeah. just 45, I'm in the wine mode, you know, that's where I am. <laughs> yeah. uh, just 45 minutes east of uh, St. Pierre Jolie and Marchand, mm -hmm. uh, bought the recipe and resurrected it re in our area. No way, so we have this Manitoba-made pick-a-pop now. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's not none of the big stuff here, it's made right here for mm -hmm. us. Yeah, made right in Manitoba from a Manitoba recipe. Well, nothing goes better with well, anything, yeah, then maple syrup. So yeah. how about we t we pair a little bit of uh, the maple syrup one with the tortilla? Absolutely, yeah. Sure. We'll open it up. Oh, I feel like it's a fancy wine tasting when here, I have yeah. to hear. Yeah, like Just, it's. Let's uh, smell the cap. Very nice. Ooh, that's a good smelling cap. Good, yeah, I really yeah, like that yeah. cap. Yeah, that's nice. Mmm, uh, a maple if you will. Mmm. Mm. Oh, good. So Manitoba made. Manitoba made in Marchand. And uh, Manitoba. Go with the torture. A little bit of maple pick-a-pop. 
That's a maple drink. That's really good. Great uh, with a sugar shock and uh, some torch here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The sweetest combination. Mm. Well, thank you very much, Sean, for giving yeah, me being, being my drink expert on this. Yeah. And uh, un gros merci encore à Real Cure. Thanks for coming out, Real. You fait le grand voyage sur le 59 de Saint Pierre Joli. Puis on remercie. Thank you guys for watching and tune in again for a great recipe for la bonne grave. À la prochaine. Thank you.